Let's get started. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good, morning. good to have you here. All right. So because because we're no, you can't do that because <laughs> we're we're limited numbers. We got to make certain that you are participating. So <laughs> I need to feed off your energy. So so gang, let's. Is it? All right. That's cool. All right, that's great. I love it. So uh, let's let's talk about um, the most obvious thing. We're in a, a transitioning market. The, uh, the real estate market is different than it has been over the last 18 to 24 months. Did, how many got used to the way it was? Did you enjoy it? Love yeah. Michelle saying, did you say no? No. No. Okay. Depends. Yeah, no. Yeah, there was some brain damage, right? Yes. What, what I believe is that, uh, you know, this is not a, uh, it's not a buyer's market and it's not a seller's market, right? We're transitioning. And if you think about that, think about the uncertainty that buyers are facing right now and think about the uncertainty that sellers are facing right now. Are they both uncertain? Say yes. yes. Yeah, they're, they're both uncertain. And so it's not really a buyer's market or a seller's market. There's, there's, there really, really isn't a lot of confidence in either group. So I, I don't think it's really anybody's market except for yours, a real estate agent, which is really a good opportunity because this is an opportunity where agents who are professionals right, who understand what's going on to bring certainty to the conversation, certainty to the, the profession of real estate to help people navigate uncertain times. <clears throat> Look, I've, I've been in the business for 30 years and I see markets going up, going down. I see tr transitional markets. I see stagnant markets. And, and that's going to continue. The key isn't going to be what's happening in the marketplace so much, so much as you know what's happening in the marketplace and you bring to the marketplace a confident message about what is happening and the best way to navigate that, uh, you know, given the circumstances. So do buyers have to approach the market a little bit differently today than, than they did even six months ago? Yes. They do, right? I mean, in terms of their financing options, they're gonna have to look at different things. Uh, do buyers, or excuse me, sellers have to approach the, the, the market in a different way than they did say even three months ago? Yes. And, and the answer of course is yes. Well, but how do they know that? How will they know that they have to take a different, a different approach? Or how do they even know that there are different approaches? Because see, they got used to the business being what it is. I mean, how many buyers, for example, when you think about it, how many buyers in the marketplace or even sellers or anybody who's interested in buying or selling real estate got used to the idea that interest rates were 3%, right? How many people have you talked to where the interest rate is now at 6% and they're shocked by that and they think that's ex exorbitant, it's way too high, and it's, it, it's a horrible time to buy. Um, have you had conversations like that, right? And if you have a historical perspective, you know that that's actually a little bit below average uh, in terms of a historical uh, uh, perspective for, for interest rates. But people don't know that. So, so whose job is it to inform them? Ours. Right, it's ours. What I believe it's about giving people perspective. Great leadership game is about giving people perspective. What we have to do is we have to see the way that they think and see how we need to adjust the way that they think, the way they perceive things, in other words, their perspective, so that they can begin to change their behavior to get the things that they want. Because can a buyer get a home in today's market for a great price? They can, right? Can a seller get their home sold in today's market for a great price? But, but how do they know that? The only way that they know that is if you, as a strong leader, bring to them a message to let them know that, hey, you can actually still do that. But let me share with you some of the things, some of the, the systems, the tools, the strategies, the techniques that I use, that I leverage in uncertain times or in markets like the one that we're in. Does that make sense? So, so one of the things that I have seen um, over the last several weeks is uh, an uptick in the conversations about home sitting on the market. And about about getting a price what a, a price reduction yeah getting the price reduced on the home there was something unique about the last 18 to 24 months you could put the home on the market and regardless of price what was going to happen to it you were going to get multiple offers and it was going to what it was going to sell and, and it usually would sell for what over price over whatever price you selected now is that yeah right now, now as we're putting homes on the market does that happen yeah, it's not happening. It might be happening we'll occasionally. Or it will happen if you price it right, right? Well, and, and so that's the point. That's what I want to talk about this morning. We're now in a market where we have to be careful and make certain that, it, look, any relationship's going to, 
are going to go run afoul. It's not going to go well if we don't set expectations. That's always the case. But man, we're in a market right now, especially when it comes to working with sellers, that if we fail to set expectations about where the market is and where it's heading and what we need to do to stay ahead of that market, we're going to end up with a lot of frustrated uh, uh, sellers and a lot of frustrated uh, clients. And as a result of that, we're not going to earn the amount of money that we want to earn because when our clients are frustrated, like any relationship, if people aren't happy in the relationship, what do they do? Blame you. They blame you. And ultimately, if, it, if the challenge isn't fixed, what do they do? They leave. They bounce, right? And, and, that, and, and we, right, no, it's all good. Yeah. So the conversation I want to have this morning is about setting the price of the home and specifically having a pricing strategy. So if you're taking notes uh, on Zoom or those of you here in the room, I, the, the topic is pricing strategy. So just write that title down. Do you have a pricing strategy? And some of you might be saying, well, I, I don't know. What is a pricing strategy? So let's talk about what a pricing strategy is. A pricing strategy is a predetermined approach to determining the price of a home and what we do in the coming weeks after we put the home on the market. Now, I'm not going to get into the detail of specifically how we determine the price of a home, but let me, let me cover just one concept. There is a difference between the price of the home and the value of the home. Let me say that again. There's a difference between the price of the home and the value of the home. Well, what is the difference, John? Well, the difference is this. Who gets to determine the price of the home? The buyer does. No. The seller does. Yeah. It's okay. You had a 50-50 chance. It's all right. Now you have a 100% chance. Who gets to determine the value of the home? The market. Yeah, the market, that's exactly right. The market gets to determine that, right? So our job is to make certain that we recognize that and to, to help sellers see that. Our job is to work together as a team to determine a price that is equal to the value of the home. And as long as we do that, it's ultimately gonna what? Right, it's gonna sell. But how often in a typical market where homes are not selling for two, three percent, five percent over ask price, do we hit the right price? I can tell you after being in the business for 30 years, the fact is that probably over half of all homes that are listed on the market ultimately have to have their price reduced in the ensuing weeks and months in a normal market. Would you, would you agree with that? Right. Well, we're, we're moving into that sort of market. So gang, it's really important that we're having a conversation with our potential sellers, people who are thinking about, you know, putting their home on the market. And ultimately, as they decide to put their home on the market, have this conversation. So the pricing strategy is number one, recognizing that the buyers determine the value. As agents working with the sellers, we determine the price. And our job is to make sure that that price is equal to the value. Make sense? Say yes. Okay, perfect. So then, then what's, the, what's the next part of the pricing strategy? Well, the next part of the pricing strategy is recognizing that it's really a 21-day cycle. So write that down. It's a 21-day cycle. The pricing strategy is a 21-day cycle. Well, what does that mean, John? What does that look like? <clears throat> what I mean is that when you list a home, when you sit down with the sellers, you're having a conversation with them, with them and saying this, that Michelle, when I list your home on a weekly basis, we're going to have a conversation. The conversation is going to be set on a particular day at a particular time. I'm going to call you and we're going to talk about the number of showings that we've had, the number of views we've had online, what the buyers who've looked at your home are saying about your home and what the sellers or the buyer's agents are saying about your home. I'm also going to share with you what I'm doing to market and expose your home. I'm going to share with you what I'm doing in terms of prospecting, in terms of door knocking, in terms of phone calls. I'm gonna share with you what we're doing in terms of marketing exposure online, in terms of the websites that your home's on and the activity that we're getting there. We're gonna have that conversation on a weekly basis. Now, because it's a 21 day cycle, how many times are you gonna have that conversation that covers all of that? It's a math question. If it's a 21 day cycle and you're having it once a week, three conversations, three conversations about this is what I'm doing to market expose your home. And this is what's happening in terms of the results, the number of showings we're getting, the feedback from, the, from the, the buyer's agents, as well as the buyers, 
and then what's happening online in terms of the views and the clicks. Does that make sense? Now, why would it be important to, to every week have a conversation with them about what it is that you're doing and the results that you're getting? Think about that. Manage expectations. Say that again. Um, to manage expectations. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking to both of you, yep. They see you're working for them, so they, they know they've hired somebody that's engaged actively. Yes. And giving them the feedback and keeping them in the loop. So it's, it's what you both said. It's, it's about setting expectations and it's also about keeping them in the loop because if people don't know what's happening, right? If you don't set the narrative, you don't tell them specifically what you're doing, it leaves it up to their what? Their imagination. And most people's imaginations. Exactly. That's exactly right. Their imagination, which is fed oftentimes by people who don't know. And so th their imagination ends up creating a story that is usually productive or counterproductive. It's going to be counterproductive. Yeah. Because if they're, imagine this, if their home is on the market one, two, three weeks, and you're not telling them what you're doing and what's happening as a result of what you're doing, right? And their home's not getting sold. Are they going to be excited or frustrated? Yeah, they're going to be frustrated. Wouldn't you be? You would be, right? So what we need to recognize is that it's a 21-day cycle that's marked by a weekly conversation that talks about what again? The feedback, the showing. Feedback the on the showings, the, right? All the activity. All the activity that's happening on the home. Sold in their neighborhood. Yep, all of that. So we, they, they, they need to know what's happening in terms of your efforts, as well as the results that are coming from those efforts and whether they're getting showings, how many showings, what those buyers are saying and what the buyer's agents are saying. And the reason for that is we want to give them some perspective to let them know, because what we're, we're working towards, we've identified a price for the home, right? We listed the home at a specific price. But if the home sits on the market one, two, three weeks, I don't care what sort of market we're in game. If a home sits on the market for three weeks, what is the market saying about the price of the home? Yeah, it's overpriced. It's overpriced. And that's what you need to recognize. And it's interesting because, gang, I'm having a lot of agents who aren't used to, I guess, a quote unquote normal market or a market where homes aren't listed and get 15 offers the first day, right? They're not used to a market where you list a home and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six weeks without an offer. And they come into me and they say, you know, it's a beautiful home. It's got all these amazing features and benefits and it's priced right. I don't know what's, what's going on. I don't understand what it is. And my response always is, well, wait a minute. You say that it has amazing features and benefits. It's priced right, but it's not selling. Well, it has to be either the, the uh, condition of the home or the, uh, or the price. And so then which is it? Well, it's a beautiful home. It's a great neighborhood. So then what else would it be? What's well, going to be price, right? But, but imagine this. Imagine there is a home that is next to a busy street underneath a bunch of high-powered electric lines, right? And the home is not selling. Why is the home not selling? It's a trick question. Left it. Yeah, I see, again, it's, it isn't the fact that it's next to a busy street. It isn't the fact that it's under high powered uh, electrical lines. It's because the price that's been set on the home is not equal to the what of the home? The value of the home. It is always the price. Because can you change the location? Can you remove the electric lines? You can't, those things are permanent. So the only thing that you have control over ultimately is what? The price. And that's what you need to recognize. And so it's important that we pay attention to this thing that we do control that is the primary determinant of whether the home is going to sell. Because you never get to determine the features and benefits. Those are what they are. Your job is to make certain you select a price that is equal to the value so that it sells. But do we always hit that mark in the beginning? Are we absolutely 100% always going to select the right price? And the answer is what? No, we're not. I, I don't have a crystal ball. I All I can do is based upon what History is telling us we should do, but we've got to pay attention on a weekly basis because the market's so dynamic, especially right now. Is the market highly volatile? Is it moving pretty quickly or is it moving pretty, sl pretty slowly in terms of pricing, in terms of attitudes? It's moving pretty quickly. 
right? Take a look at what's happened to interest rates over the last several months. Moving quickly, right? Watch what's happened to the number of showings that you get, the number of offers that you get. Has that moved pretty quickly, changed pretty quickly? And it has. So our job is to make certain that we're giving people perspective based upon what's going on when? Right now, real time. So that weekly conversation in the 21 day cycle of the pricing strategy is absolutely critical. Does that make sense? Any questions? Done? Okay. All right. Let me get my uh, I have a question, John. How does um, if it's a if the home produces income, how does that affect the value of the property? Well, we do, it's a great question, and it certainly does because you're going to take a look at your your rate of return, your what they call your cap rate, and that has to be calculated. We don't have time to figure that out, but we you, you would calculate a cap rate, and then you would share that in your marketing to show potential investors what their rate of return would be on this particular property at the given price. So I, that may or may not make sense, but that that's the answer without getting into the detail, which we don't have time for, but we can certainly do that at a later time, all right? Fair Sounds enough? good, thank you. Cool, all right. Yes. So it's a 21, you bet. It's a 21 day cycle, having a conversation, how many times? Once a week for those three weeks, okay? Then, we're going to each week, we're going to pay attention to the number of showing specifically. And based upon that, ask them the question. So based upon the number of showings and all the things that you know that I've been doing, at the end of those three weeks, ask this question, what do you think the market is saying about the price of your home? And they should come to the conclusion, as Anissa said, that the price is what? It's too high. Right? That is the purpose of the conversation every week, ultimately to make certain that their expectations in terms of price are in alignment with reality and what the market is saying. The feedback that the market's giving in terms of the number of showings, the number of views online, and whether we got an offer. So let's then take a look at, well, wait a minute, John. So you're saying that at the end of the three-week cycle or that 21-day cycle, the inevitable uh, conversation is, is we need to have a what? We need to we need a price reduction. So if, if that's the case, then by how much? That's the real question. How do we determine how much we should reduce the price of the home, right? Isn't that the $64,000 question? So how do you determine what price we should set the home at? By how much should we reduce it? So these are the standards. So just to, to make these notes, okay? If we have zero to say two to three showings, the price is likely uh, uh, higher uh, by a magnitude of about seven to ten percent. If we have, say, two to three to say five showings a week, right? I would say that the home is overpriced on a magnitude of about five to seven percent. And if we're getting five or more showings a week. And I, I get there's some crossover the transition from one number to the next. Uh, but if we're getting five or uh, more showings, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 showings a week, then the, pro the home is probably overpriced between three to 5%. Not a lot, okay? Now, one of the things we need to pay attention to is that when you're in a market like this, as compared to the market that we were in even say three, six months ago, the average days on market, are they gonna go up or go down? Inevitably, they're gonna go up, right? So pay attention to what's happening in the marketplace in terms of how long it's taking the average home to actually, good morning, Millie. The, the time it's taking the average home to actually sell, right? But it still doesn't change the fact that if a home is on the market for three weeks and you're not getting an offer on it, the market has clearly spoken because in those three weeks, those intervening three weeks from the time that you got the home on the market to the time that you've ended that 21 day pricing strategy cycle, have there been homes that have sold in the marketplace? And the answer is what? Absolutely, there are homes that have sold. So if homes are selling and yours didn't, it's always gonna go back to the home needs a price what? It needs a price reduction, okay? So again, you have those three ranges, zero to say two to three showings a week, with no offers in the course of 21 days, we know that the price, the, the home is overpriced by how much? 
Yeah, probably seven to 10 percent. If we're getting, say, two to three to five showings a week, but no offers over the course of the three weeks, the home is overpriced maybe by how much? Five to seven. Five to seven. And if we're getting five plus, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 showings a week, and it's not uh, getting an offer, then we know what? That it's likely overpriced by what? Three to 5%. Yeah. Now, it's not rocket science, but it's also not a science. It's not exact, right? And that's why we have the ranges and kind of the overlap. But what I know is this, gang, whatever category you're in, whether it's, you know, no showings to a few showings to a lot of showings, and the home is not selling, the market is saying that the price of the home needs to be reduced. So just one caveat when it comes to reducing the price of the home. Uh, this is a mistake that I see agents make time and time again. What they will do, the seller will be on board for a price reduction. But they're not on board to the reduction to the extent that is that is necessary based upon the pricing strategy. Let's say that they were getting, you know, say three showings a week uh, and they got uh, a total of nine showings over three weeks. Uh, and according to the pricing strategy, the home should probably be reduced by how much? Yeah, five to seven percent. So let's say it's seven percent. Let's say it's a million dollar property. So it should be reduced by how much if you do the math? Seventy thousand. Seventy thousand dollars. But the seller says to you, no, uh, I agree we need to reduce it, but let's reduce it by ten thousand dollars. Now, the question is, should you reduce it? Because, look, it's priced in a million. They're at least willing to reduce it ten thousand. Should we reduce it to the to, to nine hundred ninety thousand? And Anissa shaking her head. No. So what would you say? Yes. Period. I mean, if you can get more, yes, but I wouldn't okay. not reduce it. <laughs> okay. So the, the, the answer, the middle. yeah, so the, the answer is no, don't reduce it. And, and, and let me share with you why. The reason we don't want to is because the seller will think that they followed your advice of reducing the price of the home, which they did, except that. They didn't reduce it by the amount that you know they should in order for the home ultimately to what? So what they did, it was really window dressing. They did what they thought they should do based upon your advice, right? So in their mind, they've taken the steps that you recommended, but the fact is they really didn't. And so over the next week, two weeks, three weeks, when they thought they followed your advice and they don't get the results that they expected, who are they going to be frustrated frustrated with? You or they themselves? Yeah, they're going to be frustrated with you. That's right. You, the agent. So if a seller wants to reduce the price of a home by an amount that's not equal to what you should based upon the pricing strategy, don't reduce it until they're ready to face reality and reduce it by the amount that's actually going to get it sold. Now, look, if we know that it needs a $70,000 price reduction and they're willing to do it 50000 should we tell them, no, we're not going to reduce it? The answer is no. I mean, let's be reasonable. But if they're saying 10000 is what they want to reduce it by, and you know a $10,000 reduction, will a $10,000 reduction on a million-dollar property make a difference? And the answer is yeah. what? No. So don't lead them to believe that it will and accept that and say, yeah, let's reduce it to 990000 because they think they've done everything that they need to do based upon your counsel to get the home sold. And then in three weeks, when it's not sold, are they going to be frustrated? Yeah. So I have a question. make certain, say that again. I have a question. So what yeah, if you're, you're saying not to reduce it, but the, the owner, the seller is saying, no, I want a reduction. You said it's going to be a reduction and they just don't budge. And you say, okay, you know what? This is what we're going to do. I'll reduce it but, uh, uh, to what you want. But in writing, we're going to, it's not the percentage that I suggested. Mm -hmm. So that way we could keep a history so if they are unsatisfied you could say hey you know what it wasn't according to the percentage i suggested so then that, they no, that's a great it's a great point and, and the reason that i don't do that because I, I i'm following your logic and it makes a lot of sense the reason i don't do it is because if i ask for a price reduction and i get it they're less likely to give me a second reduction and if i get two reductions it's 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 likely that i'm um, less likely to get a third reduction. So I, what I want to do is make certain that when I do finally get them to the table of reducing the price of the home, so to speak, 
I have my best chance possible of getting a price reduction the first time. My chances of getting a reduction go down dramatically each time that I ask for one and actually take one. So my job is to make certain that when I do get the price reduction, that I do it uh, to an amount that will actually cause the home to sell. Because sometimes what will happen is we'll reduce it by, by, by the 10,000, for example, in that scenario, and they think they've done what they're supposed to, and then the home doesn't sell, and I go back to them and ask for a price reduction, and they say, well, no, uh, we, we did the price reduction, and even though I know you said that we should have reduced it by a higher amount, we're just not willing to do that. They, only, they can only stomach so much in most cases in terms of a price reduction, unless they absolutely have to sell, right? Most sellers are gonna be less likely to reduce the price of the home because they take a look at the equity that they're, supposedly that they're going to lose. And my argument is, well, you don't lose any equity on a home that isn't worth what you're asking for. You only lose equity on a home that you sell for less than what it's actually worth, but they don't look at it that way. And so we have to make certain that one of the things that we're doing in that conversation on a weekly basis is we're building the credit, so to speak, their confidence in our ability that we know what we are doing so that they will follow our advice at the end of that 21 day cycle so that we can actually get them to the table of the price reduction so we can get it reduced to the level that is necessary that we know is necessary in order to get the home actually sold. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So Michelle, do, do, is this making sense to you? Do you have questions on it? Are you clear on it? Okay. All right. Anissa, how about you? Any thoughts? Okay, gang, look, we're out of time, but I just make certain that you recognize that this market is full of opportunity, but it's, it's full of opportunity for agents who recognize that the way we've been doing business for over the 18, 24 months um, preceding what we have right now won't work. The approach that we took the last 18 to 24 months will not work. And as a result, we've got to make certain that we're using different strategies. And one of those strategies in our conversations with sellers and in getting homes sold is this pricing strategy. If you will use it in conversations, whether you're prospecting, because yeah, I, I, I use it in prospecting to try to, to, try to get people to, to have a conversation with me about choosing me versus the competition. I want them to know that I have a pricing strategy that most real estate agents don't. And that's a compelling reason to sit down with me because my pricing strategy will ensure not only does their home get sold, but gets sold for as much money as possible in today's changing market. So I'm gonna talk about that in my, my prospecting conversations and then give them the detail of the pricing strategy when I sit down with them at their kitchen table, not on the phone, but rather at their kitchen table so I can then have the, the further conversation about their wants, their needs, their desires, their wishes, their hopes and fears, what they're trying to accomplish. And I also have an opportunity then, therefore, to build more value so that ultimately they choose me versus the competition. Because just in conclusion, gang, this entire pricing strategy and your confidence with which you present yourself and what you do to get a home sold is about doing two things. Number one, building rapport. And the more rapport that you build, the more likely they are to listen to what you have to say, have a longer conversation with you. And in the process of doing that and sharing things like the pricing strategy, then you get the opportunity to do the other thing that we need in a business relationship, aside from building rapport, is building what? Build, building value. Value. Rapport and value. If we have those two things, we're going to separate ourselves from the competition. And who are they going to list the home with? And who are they successfully going to get the home sold with? Me. That's exactly right. You. So just remember the pricing strategy. And if you, if, if, if you didn't take notes on this or you have further questions, Go to your script book because this is outlined in your script book. Everybody should have a copy of the script book. But if you have questions, you'd like to chat about it, you want to do some role play on it, happy to do that with you. Just reach out to me. All right. So let's finish this up with some closing affirmations. You know the drill. Grab your 